So my challenge for today was to post a thought-provoking photo that made a feminist statement. I know for lots of women, especially people like myself who are curvier, who are a little bit bigger, feel a lot of internalized pressure to hide their bodies. Which is why I wanted to send the message across to all women that your value does not change as your weight does. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys don't know, Emily in Paris is a Netflix show. It has been all the rage for the past few months. If you guys haven't seen the show, first things first, go watch it. What are you even doing? It's the best thing on Netflix right now. But it's basically a hybrid between Lizzie McGuire and Sex in the City. So it backs. And I, for one, am obsessed. She just like moves to Paris and she has like seven Instagram followers. You know, within the matter of a couple of posts, She's a full-blown influencer living her best Parisian life. So we thought it'd be fun to put her Instagram growth strategy to the test and have me Instagram like Emily in Paris for a week. So I have a, a little baby following on Instagram, but to even the playing field, we decided to start fresh, brand new gram for a brand new gal living her best life in Sydney. I started a new Instagram account. I called it Natalia in Sydney because I'm Natalia. I live in Sydney. Started off with zero followers. Decided I need to get a little bit of traction just to get the gram going. Did a little shout out to my friends and a few of them gave me a pity follow back. So in the show, Emily posts a boomerang of herself eating a chocolate croissant and she posts the caption, butter plus chocolate equals love heart emoji. So my challenge was to try to recreate this success, but to do it with an iconic Aussie snack. Okay, so I'm walking down the street. I'm off to find the snack that's gonna be in my first Instagram post. Something that's iconic, something that's Aussie. I don't know, I'm stressed. Okay, Tim Tams are on sale. That seems like a good shout. Mint slice, pretty iconic, but perhaps niche. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I've just come back from the shops. I have found some iconic snack options. But there are two that I found and I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose. So I'm really not sure what to go with here. The humble finger bun. Iconic, delicious. This was the shit in childhood. However, I also stumbled across Ice Vovo Lamington flavor. And they have come out with a limited edition Lamington flavor. So like, why have one Aussie icon when you can have two? Okay, so I just posted my first post. I went with the Ice Bobo and Lamington Bikis because they were just like ridiculously good. So I've just posted it. Gonna wait a day and uh, see what happens to my follower count. So this morning I've just gone and checked what my follower count is. I've gone and checked how the last post performed. And my current follower count is at six. Every single one of those people are colleagues that definitely followed me because I asked them to. And my post has nine views, but only two likes. So <laughs> that's gotta stand for something. So day two, Emily takes a snap of two kids that are not her own playing in front of the Palais Royale in Paris. Her caption starts off with a hashtag, Battle Royale at the Palais Royale. But the problem is, Ems is only out here hashtagging the first word, not the whole statement. I don't know if you guys know how hashtags work, but you can't have spaces in between it if you want it to count. So we had to tweak my day two challenge a little bit. Obviously couldn't take photos of kids, but we did take photos of something better, dogs. I guess I've just been like waiting for some dogs to turn up to the park um, and I'm not really having any luck. Oh, oh shit. Oh my god, there's two dogs playing at the opposite end of the park. Okay, let me see if I can get close to this. Right on the other end and they're playing. I am trying to figure out <laughs> how to creepily get close to them. I am feeling really creepy right now. I'm trying to get close to the dogs. There's literally no one else in the park. Ah. So I had like one option, like when I was in the dog park, there were two dogs like really, really far away and I kind of zoomed in on them and like took a snap of them both together. On my way back home after I was like, you know what, like this is as good as it's gonna get. I stumbled across a little doggy 
on a leash and he kind of gave me a little smile, so I gave him a quick little snap. I got his uh, owner's owner's feet in it, but that's fine. You can't recognize people from their feet. Or can you? Had a quick look at how my Instagram performance was yesterday, and it was not great. <laughs> I'm currently on eight followers. Again, the extra ones that I got overnight um, with some more colleagues. My last post though, got three likes. Two of those are for people that don't follow me. So I think the dog hashtag did do something. Okay, so we're seeing silver linings here. Day three. Emily takes a photo of a neo-Roman sculpture in a French park with the captions, chiseled abs. We love to see it. So my challenge today was to find a structure and to post a simile punny caption. Today was actually like really simple because straight away I thought of a sculpture that's in my local area that is super unique. For legal reasons, unfortunately, we can't actually show you what my picture was because it's a picture of art that I and BuzzFeed do not actually own. But imagine a samurai with a stormtrooper helmet. So what I did, I jumped on the gram, uploaded the photo. The caption was, I've come over to the east side. Cause you know, Darth Vader's like, Luke, come to the dark side. So yeah, it was just like a cute little commentary on the fact that this Westie has migrated over to the east side. Look, I had a little looky at my current IG numbers and um, not quite what Emily was on. So I now have a total of nine followers, but look, we're getting a little bit of traction. So I'm excited to see what today's challenge brings. Day four, our girl Ems, she takes a little stroll to the park and she posts some content of some cheese with the caption, Paris is for cheese lovers. And you know what? It truly is. So my challenge today was to post a photo of some cheese. I had a jam packed day, I was slammed. And so it was like after 5 p.m. and I was like, shit, I need to post some cheese. Luckily for me, your girl is a cheese lover. I did the most with the little that I had in my fridge and my pantry. And I came out with this zinger. Like, here's the thing. We work at BuzzFeed, we work at Tasty, we know that the people love cheese. Apparently though, no one wanted to see my sad fridge cheese. <laughs> The final day of the Emily in Paris challenge. Honestly, I thought this day would never come. <laughs> it has been a long week, let me tell you. My cheese photo, look, it did the most out of the rest. You know, I've now got 12 followers, um, but it only, it only got one like. But I've dressed for the occasion, I'm a little French inspired get up. Might be a little bit more Gossip Girl than Emily in Paris, but we make do. Day five. This was actually the hardest challenge yet. In the show, Emily's tasked to work on a client that basically sells some menopause treatment. And she also discovers that the word for vagina in French is actually a masculine word. So Emily makes a pretty big statement. She tweets out a photo of this treatment with the statement in French, the vagina is not male. So my challenge for today was to post a thought-provoking photo that made a feminist statement. Now in Sydney, the weather's warming up, it's summer and it's bikini season. And every year when that rolls around, I know for lots of women, especially people like myself who are curvier, who are a little bit bigger, feel a lot of internalized pressure to hide their bodies or they feel some kind of shame about being on the beach, being exposed, and I really kind of wanted to reflect on my own journey with body acceptance and how that this internalized shame and internalized misogyny in a lot of cases has really impacted my experience of summer growing up. For today's challenge, I posted two photos of myself in bikinis. One was taken today and the other one was taken a few months ago when I was a little bit bigger. As someone who has been as small as a size 10 and as big as a size 16, I know that society treats you better when you are thin and this is bullshit, which is why I wanted to send the message across to all women that your value does not change as your weight does. And in summer in Sydney, ladies, no matter how big, small, young or old you are, get out there, own it in a bikini, 
and enjoy the beach. You deserve it. So while the initial goal was to hit tens of thousands of followers just like Emily, I didn't get that. But I did learn something even more important. Instagram is a platform for sharing and connecting with other people. So why not post something with meaning?